Hello YouTube, this is WA2BMB. I'm working on yet another 820. This one gave me a lot of problems because uh, the guy that had it before me really did a number on this power supply here. All the diodes were burned up and uh, I don't know what he was trying to, he was trying to redo the high voltage but he just messed everything up. I tacked in a few diodes and, and, and resistors and such but uh, I'm still working on uh, getting that completed. But uh, I just want to give you a tip, if, uh, if you want to see if your receiver on, the, on your TS820, your brand new acquisition, is working, you could do it without uh, plugging it into the wall and energizing all these high voltage circuits. If you look at where this red clip lead is, right here, this is where the low voltage AC comes in and it's rectified here and on these red wires what you got is about 14 volts DC and that goes to power every all these stages the receiver stages of the of your TSA 20 so in order to get this thing to work all you need is to supply about one amp worth of anywhere from 12 to 14 volts DC and uh, your receiver will activate. Now, if you look right here, I do have the AC plug uh, stuck in the back of this thing. You have to have the plug in here, either that or I believe it's pins eight and nine, you have to jump her together. Otherwise it won't work. Because there's an internal connection on that, that little black box that you're seeing to your left, the AC cord that uh, jumpers uh, I believe it's pins 8 and 9 together that supply the DC to the solid state. Now, I told you, you have to have the back plugged in. Excuse the shaking camera here. I just want to prove to you that here's the line cord. It's now plugged in. What you're, what you're looking at now is the yellow and the green clip leads. One is the wire for the meter, and the other negative is the wire for the supply down here. It's an old uh, 8 amp supply that I got for uh, the price of a couple of cups of coffee at a ham fest. This thing weighs a ton. It's got to weigh at least 40 pounds. It is one solid piece of equipment that will never ever die. I think at the end of the world, the only thing left will be cockroaches and this power supply right here. So, now, down to business. Let's, uh, let's turn on the supply. And as you can hear, okay, now you're looking at the, uh, the current meter. It's about one amp. It's about 14, 13, 14 volts. In fact, here it is right here. It's 13.36 volts. And like I said, I have it plugged into this connection right here on the power supply. There is no other AC connection that it's connected to. This is strictly running off of this external power supply. And as you could hear, it's running. You can hear the stations. So just for a quick quick little shortcut that you guys might be able to use I just wanted to show you that have fun please be very 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 careful in here major league high voltage if you uh, come across if you put your fingers across that power supply uh, it will get your attention in uh, in a split second and it's extraordinarily dangerous if you don't know what you're doing find somebody who does but as for right now, there is no high voltage there because the rig, again, is not plugged in. The only thing that's operating it is my trusty, rusty, lambda-regulated power supply. Now, you don't need this type of supply. All you need is a, uh, like a 12 or 13 volt supply that will um, supply a little over an amp of current. So there you go. Just. Uh, Quick little trick to show you, uh, so you could tell if your dilapidated A20 that you just bought at your ham fest will receive it all. 
Uh, there's no driver tube in it right now because I don't need it. All I need is 14 volts to get this receiver to work. I just uh, figured I'd pass it on in case it's uh, of any uh, interest to anybody. Good luck and please be very careful when you're working on this rig. Like I said, big time high voltage. This is WA2BMB Alex in western central New Jersey saying bye bye for now.